So, Cannon has dropped a big old bomb on us, or should I say, a little bomb, in the form of the R100 and a new 28mm pancake lens. <laughs> What is up y'all, it's Logan here, and today we're going to talk about Canon's two new products, and I don't think anyone was really looking for them. Let's find out what these new Canon products have to offer for us. So the R100 is going to be what we thought the R50 was in Canon's new entry level camera. Now looking over the specs of this, it honestly just seems like an amalgamation of a lot of spare parts. Um, it's going to flaunt a 24.2 megapixel Digic 8 processor. It will do 4K24 with a crop. Um, I've sent some questions along with this, and I've yet to find out what the exact crop is, but I'm assuming it's going to be a somewhat heavy one. Full HD, 1080p, um, at 60 frames per second, so, uh, that's good. And it's not that 1080p isn't usable footage by any means, but I'm kind of curious to see what the video is going to look like coming from this. I can't see it being too high quality. It is going to flaunt Canon's dual pixel uh, autofocus, so that's a good thing. 2.36 million dot EVF and no flippy screen. So anyone that was looking at getting a cheap vlogging camera or something to that effect, you're going to have to look upwards to the R50. It sports a whopping 6.5 frames per second in electronic mode, and I do believe that's reduced to 3.5 frames per second in the mechanical shutter. It will have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so easy to communicate via the Canon camera app. That's a great thing. Um, I do find that the Canon app works pretty well on all the cameras. And it will come packaged with the RFS 18 to... 45 and then the 55 to 210. So it's going to have a 1 4,000th of a second shutter in electronic and in bulb mode it can run up to 30 seconds. ISO sensitivity out the box is going to be 100 to 12,800 and that's going to be expandable up to 25,600. Um, something I do like about this camera that you don't see in all these entry-level cameras is it's going to have a manual mode. So it will allow you full control over pretty much everything. The buffer on this is looking like it's gonna be six frames raw, so you're not even gonna get to utilize that full 6.5 frames per second. Um, your burst is gonna be less than a second on that. Now on the JPEG, it is gonna be able to support up to 100 images, so take with that what you will. So because I did not script this, and I'm just going off the seat of my pants here, I'm gonna read the video specs that we got. So it's gonna do H.264 MPEGs in 8-bit. Ultra HD 4K at 23.98 frames per second. And as we stated, uh, there is gonna be a crop on that. And I do believe there's gonna be some limitations on the time as well. Speculation is that it's gonna be like around 10 minutes. Um, and then it's going to do your typical 1080 full HD at 59.94 frames per second, 29.97 frames per second, and 23.98 frames per second. Um, there is going to be a 120 frame per second 1080p, but it's looking like the data on that is not great. And then it will also support uh, 59.94 frames per second and 720. It is going to have an IP streaming mode, so if you want to use it as a webcam or as a streaming device, uh, I guess that would be probably its best suited use, honestly. Memory cards are going to be a single slot SD, SDHC, or SDXC card. It is going to support the infamous Canon Micro HDMI port and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so that's a welcome addition. There will be one USB-C port and it's going to have 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. No image stabilization on this camera, which we expected with a camera this cheap. And this being an APS-C type sensor, it is going to have that 1.6 times Canon crop factor. And now let's talk about pricing. So pricing uh, entry level with this, no lens, body only, is going to be $479 US. So it's coming in um, close to $200 cheaper than the RF or R50. I believe that that price gap, you should just buy the R50. So with the 18 to 45 uh, kit lens, that's going to come in at $599. So they are also offering a kit with the R100 body, the 18 to 45, 
and the 55 to 210, and that's gonna come in at $829 US. So here's, uh, here's kind of my thoughts on this whole thing. Canon had some Digic 8 processors and wanted to make use of them, put them in this small, affordable body, which is a decent entry-level camera, cut the price off of the R50, which again, to me, I would just splurge on the R50 if I was a beginning photographer and saw all that it had to offer versus what's coming in with this R100. But they clumped together all these parts, made a half decent camera, and something that uh, just about anyone can kind of scrum up the change for. This, to me, is a camera that I would buy for my seven-year-old niece and put it in her hands and say, learn this, follow me, and once you get good, we'll upgrade you. Now, another use that I could see this being for would be webcam services, uh, like utilizing it for Teams, Zoom calls, um, potentially like streaming. Even then, I would think that you might want something that's maybe a little bit higher quality of a streaming device. So I don't stream. I don't know anything about that area of the internet. I think that that would be a great entry level like podcast camera, um, especially since it does have the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, or maybe like for some Twitch streamers. But let me know what you think on that. Um, I could be completely wrong. I will blatantly admit that. So, with that being said, let's kind of close out on the camera and let's talk about this RF 28 millimeter 2.8 pancake lens, which does generate some interest for me, albeit not much but I do think it has a use. So this is gonna be a full frame lens. Uh, aperture range is gonna be from 2.8 up to F22. It's gonna be a gear type STM motor. So autofocus, you know, it'll be the typical entry level RF line autofocus, which is pretty good. It will somehow fit that customizable control ring on there. And it's gonna have a seven aperture blade diaphragm. So this lens is gonna sport a 9.1 inch minimum focusing distance. So Pretty close, a, a win on a lens like this, in my opinion. And it also is gonna have a 0.17 times magnification, so it should give somewhat of a decent depth of field still. So here's the kicker with this one. You're not gonna be able to use any type of lens filters on this without buying the optional lens hood. So that lens hood is gonna come in at $44.95. With the original price of the lens being $299, that's gonna bring you up to just under $350 US. Still not a bad price. I do, in my opinion, I think that should have just been included. So here's the main thing I wanna to touch on this, is the dimensions. So this is gonna be 2.7 inches by one inch. It's gonna come in at 4.2 ounces. So this is a small lens. And I think it may make cameras like the R50 or potentially like the R8, the R10, not pocketable, but hoodie pocketable. And definitely like, if you're a fanny pack person, I like fanny packs, you're gonna be able to slide it into a fanny pack pretty easy. So I do think this lens has some potential for vlogging, uh, especially if you have like longer arms and are able to hold it out, not factoring in that crop factor for the APS-C style cameras. So like on something like an R8, or even an R6 like we're shooting on right now. Another area I think this thing could be used is for street photography. So you throw that lens hood on, throw a black mist filter or a pro mist filter, or whatever dream filter you wanna use. Uh, I think you'd get some cool shots with this thing. It's definitely an interesting lens. Um, it has some allure to me. I don't, I'm not gonna be jumping at it whenever it comes out, but it might be something that I add to my arsenal just to have it and you know throw on and it's easy to take out. We're currently shooting on a 24 to 105 right now and I love this lens, but it's not a pocketable lens by any means. So this could give you that, that 28 millimeters and allow you to slide it into a hoodie. So that's gonna close out everything, but I do have two quick things I wanna show you that we're very excited about here at Graham Media. So I've been tracking some Fox kits. Uh, we've got three of them right across the river from me. So today I went ahead and purchased a Spy Point Flex. So this is gonna to connect to uh, the cellular network for me and give me some live pictures and hopefully 
I'm going to be able to track when these guys are moving around because I've not had any luck in lighting situations that are suitable on the 800 F11. Um, and I still can't afford any of the, uh, the low aperture high-end L lenses yet. So when we get there, we'll get there. But as of right now, I still got to have a little bit of light when I'm shooting. I have pushed the R6 to uh, 25,600 ISO, even as high as 51,200 ISO. And when utilizing Topaz, I've been able to get some sharp shots out of it, such as this beaver. But I'd like to have a little bit more low light capability and not have to push that ISO up as much. So our second little surprise here is a very big one. We now have an R5. So we're super, super excited about this one. Um, if you don't know, now you know, Adorama has some pretty good deals going on with these. So I got the battery grip, the R5, um, an extra battery, and trying to think of what else something else in there all for under four thousand dollars after tax and everything um i know the camera's you know going on that four year three year old mark whatever it is but this has been my dream camera for basically since i started photography two years ago and it lives up to its name um the pictures and the croppability on this thing wonderful I am going to do a little bit more in-depth uh, first thoughts and then potentially do a full review on this thing and how it holds up in 2023 right now. The only thing I have it to, to compare it to is the R6 that we're shooting on right now. Um, I started on a T5i, and then for those of you that have viewed the Fujifilm video, um, I got an X-T20 that is kind of my, my everyday carry. So... If you'd like to see that subscribe hit the like button let me know down in the comments uh but i think it's going to be coming either way so that's going to wrap everything up for us uh thanks for stopping by we'll see you on the next one